This is Women Matters from June. We are already in June 2022. And today I'm happy that Christia, Christine is uh, with us again and also the two Martinis where the other women are, I don't know, maybe because it's Pentecost in, uh, in, in Europe and that's a holiday, so they might be away somewhere. So, um, before Beatrice told us that she had an exhibition yesterday, and I thought we would use this uh, encounter to have you tell us a little bit about that. All right. <laughs> we <would> like that. <laughs> um, it, the exhibition, it's an online exhibition uh, curated by a, a person in, a, well, a little gallery in LA. Um, and during the pandemic, they've been doing online exhibitions. And um, the curator, Christine, has for many years has been doing an ongoing project called Perceive Me. She is a, a plus size woman and she has a, she deals a lot with body image and um, self-love and self-acceptance and understanding her body. And um, so she did this art project where she commissioned, she's also an artist, but she commissioned 60 artists to do nude portraits of her in sculpture form and photograph and painting. And then that exhibition has been touring around um, California. And um, she recently had the idea that she was thinking about identity and thinking about this whole project and what would it be like if she did an open call for artists to submit work about their own identity or the things that they think about in terms of their body or in terms of their body in space or, um, who they are. I mean, there's a whole blurb on the front of on the top of the exhibition page, but um, so she put out an open call and there were 600 submissions and then 100 works got selected for this online exhibition, which opened yesterday and will be up. It'll be up live for a month and then I think then it'll still be online in an archive. Um, and I got three, I got three works in it. One is a digital collage self portrait and then two videos. And um, and yesterday was the opening, and so there's a there's a there was a Zoom video of everybody talking about their work, but um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's what it was. It's called Perceive You, and the gallery is called Shoebox Arts LA, um, and it's all see, online. We can, we can see your video there. We can. Yeah, so the the works are all up there, and then also uh, Shoebox has a YouTube channel and a Facebook page. So the um, the Zoom recording of the opening where all the artists talked about their work is on YouTube. Mm, wonderful. Yeah, Heidi, you're muted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I tried to share the screen because I've uh, I have it up the thing uh, where I found you. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. this and then if you scroll up one more, scroll up a little bit more. more. Yeah, that's the the digital collage uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay yeah. so those are um, my three works and this uh this is the video yeah that that's that's my first the first video i submitted and then there's a second video that i submitted yeah mm -hmm. and that's the next one in dancing pose because you are also a dancer yeah uh, it, it, has it some something also to do with dance or is it just an art exhibition because sometimes you do the exhibitions with dancing aren't you the, the the exhibition it's all so I submitted that as a as a it's a dance film and mm -hmm. and I didn't do the um I was the performer and 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 do the narration but I the cinematography and the design and the editing was um by uh, some filmmakers that were working they were doing a fellowship at a, a local film center called uh, Union Docs it's all about documentary film and they wanted to make a film of someone dancing in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I, I got connected to them and, and, and got filmed dancing around New York. Um, so that's that's a dance film, but it was all, it's, it's actually, it was, it was nice because I got, you know, I got three works in, but they're three different mediums. Mm -hmm. you know, one, one is a digital collage, it's just visual. One is the projection installation, which I might've shared I mean, I made that in 2020, so I might have shared it here before, but um, it's a, you know, an installation in my bedroom that I did with, with video art. 
And then the third piece is really my performance because, you know, I didn't do the filming. Mm -hmm. I just did the dancing. So, um, yeah. So, so what, that, what does it mean to be part of such a um, exhibition for you? It's very exciting. It's exciting to, um, I don't know, to be selected, right, among so many people and to, to you know, get a, get the recognition that, you know, my work is appreciated. <laughs> um, there, she did say that she's hoping maybe in the future to do a, an in-person show where it would be two galleries side by side, one with her perceive me exhibition of all of the commissions of people who did the portraits of her and then one gallery of of this response um and if that happens that would be my first you know official exhibition you know in the world i mean i did my thesis exhibition but that was you know at the school and i created it and nobody saw it <laughs> yeah i remember that this was at the beginning of COVID, and yeah. you were, had done your exam and then <laughs> nobody could go to see the exhibition which was yeah. your exam you know it was so yeah. sad but we, we did a, an episode around that two years ago it's a long time that we are together two years ago <laughs> i know it's amazing yeah so what, what was really interesting about this this particular exhibition is is a lot of it just had had to do with the body and identity and society and what you know the whole idea is perception How do other people perceive you? How do you perceive yourself? Where does that clash? Where does that, you know, where do you find harmony? What are the various, you know, the many different identities you have as a person, you know, relating to, to gender or, or relationship role in your family or, or society, you know, your, your job or, you know, whatever it is, you know, what, what other people you know, and, and the pressure of society to be a certain way, right? To you're expected to look a certain way or be a certain way or act a certain way. And what if, you know, what if that's not actually who you are or what if, whatever, right? How, how do you, how do you reconcile, you know, what's expected what, of you? What do you think the answers were? Which answers did you see there in your own work and in the work of the others? Um. I mean, there was a lot, there were a lot of people who struggled with, with eating disorders um, and, and um, a number of people who, who were talking, you know, about dieting and weight and, and body form and what, what's allowed to be visible. And, and some were talking about emotions. You know, there was one artist who was talking about ugly crying, you know, when you, when you really, really deeply or sobbing and you know you make this really scrunched up face and your makeup's running and whatever you know um that that's it's not acceptable to do that out in the world but why not you know and what what things are we hiding away or you know to pretend to be other um there were a lot of mothers who were talking about motherhood um i don't know mama you went to i mean you're only here for a few more minutes you want to talk about what you saw You went to the opening. <laughs> yeah, I found it very, very moving. That's why I thought about Women Matters. Um, so it's kind of a nice juxtaposition that that was, uh, that's kind of fresh, fresh off the um, whatever, <laughs> the press. Um, because I, I've been railing against this my whole life. The, the idea, you know, I've, I've never worn makeup except when I was on stage. Uh, well, actually not even on stage as a performer, um, only when I was working as a professional um, mime and clown, because then of course makeup is, is the identity. <laughs> you create your identity on your face. Um, but I always, you know, my mother, I said, oh, you know, you're a public persona, you perform in public, you should wear makeup, you should, um, dress well, blah, 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 this and that. You shouldn't gain weight. You know, pe nobody wants to look at you. You're obese and all this stuff. And I always fought against it because I thought if, you know, what, what I'm sharing with the world is my, is the music and, or my, or if it's my lecturing and it doesn't, I, I just want to be transparent. It's not about me. It's about whatever it is I'm trying to convey and share. 
And so these um, artists yesterday in the show, it was, I found it really, really moving that they, um, you know, that it's it's been such an issue. I mean, one woman said, talked, it was really great, actually. Um, you should check in the, in the YouTube video. Um, I don't know what point, I can't remember where their name is, but she was, um, I, I, I related to it because she was growing up in the 60s and 70s. Um, so I think she's in her 70s now, the lady, um, the artist. And she was talking about the, um, you know, at, in high school, going to bed at night with curlers in her hair and all these pins and all this stuff, and then not being able to sleep and then spending a whole hour every morning before school in high school doing her makeup and, and the obsession um, with you know how the girls had to appear and of course the boys didn't have to do anything you know and and then she said how incredibly liberating it was with feminism in the 70s that she could she how she suddenly saw herself for the first time just as a human being and the liberation and um here's monia mm -hmm. um hello monia monia's yeah. taking Monia, you're going to you're going to replace me in this group because I have to leave in three minutes. <laughs> but continue your impression of the uh, exhibition, um, and then we no. Go. So I I found it really profound because um, it's something I still I still feel isn't being adequately addressed in our society because I think women are still, especially women in pu in the public arena, are still totally playing into what I consider a very demeaning role. You know the the you know, like news anchors and things like that, these women that are highly educated and articulate and intelligent, and they still feel like they have to wear low cleavage and short skirts, and they have to cross their legs provocatively on screen on the television, you know, that no one's even going to care about the news, unless they're looking at some kind of supermodel conveying the news. And to me, that's really, it's demeaning and insulting. And, but I feel like women um, the whole me too thing, I, well, don't get me started. I've got to go anyway, but, but, <laughs> but I feel like the whole me too movement um, was very hypocritical to a large degree because women, it's their own fault that well, they, they're still, no, not all of them. I'm, not I'm being, all, but a bit, but, yes. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean this sense that so many women are still playing into what I consider the kind of caveman, um, caveman attitudes about the gender roles. And it's, it's I feel like um, what I loved about the, the original feminist movement in the seventies with the bras burning and all that stuff. I mean, I was just a child, so I didn't really like live in it, but my mother was, you know, of an age where that was relevant. And th what was healthy about that original movement was it was, it was the real deal. It was like, we are people, we are not women, we are people. We are human beings, just like, like the male gender and, and we want a voice and we want equal rights. And, you know, to me, that was very authentic. And now it's this weird kind of throwback, I think, you know, this, you know, we still have the whole glamour thing and the models and, you know, all that stuff. And, and it's, it's profound because also there's the whole, there's the sex industry, you know, and all that stuff that, that uh, there's so many evils in society, pornography, where women are playing into this very unhealthy and I think, demeaning um role so that's my big speech and um <laughs> no chance for anyone work. to argue <laughs> just <laughs> no one gets the mic and walk out of no one gets to argue with me <laughs> because i'm going away <laughs> but blessings to everybody stay safe and well and um i hope to see you in two weeks and have a safe trip heidi thank you oh maybe i'll, I'll see you tomorrow hopefully if, if um everything works out right okay good in Integral and Frauenfeld. You should go, Beatrice. Get your German going. I, I can't right now. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Love to everybody. Feel and, better. Okay. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Yeah. And take care too. Better, better. And, yeah. And also you, Christine, with your doctor appointment. I hope everything goes well. Okay. Thank you. All right. Blessings and love to everybody. Monia's, Monia's silent, but now you can chime in, Monia. I'm going yes. <laughs> take my to, to update Monia about what we were doing. I'm sorry, but uh, we were out and yeah, I couldn't come earlier. Uh, what's the topic? Yeah, exactly. Beatrice, <laughs> you, it's still well, your no, we can We can gear, the, that was more of an update than anything else. We can gear it in a different direction. I, I had my work shown in an online exhibition 
um, that uh, got uh, opened, well, opened yesterday, went live yesterday and it's up for a month. And it was all about uh, identity and body image and perception. It's called Perceive You is the title of the exhibition. It's a curated show of a hundred artworks um, from, from artists all over the place who um, submitted works about, um, you know, self-portraits and works about their identity and, and you know, uh, motherhood and gender and, and anxiety and depression and emotions and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we were, yeah. I was telling everybody about that and then we were kind of talking about those ideas. Yeah, and it was about, I, I, I asked her what she was sort of, uh, the questions which were coming up in these artworks, what were the answers? And she said that there were many uh, people with eating disorders and all sorts of things of fat or whatever. And so that uh, was the occasion for, for Victoria to come in and uh, sort of complain about that women still are in this role of uh, makeup and uh, being nice and being, you know, like like they were before the uh, feminist movement. And with the feminist movement in our time, Monia, we tried to overcome all this. And actually, and she said only she had f f makeup on only when she played the clown. And the clown creates uh, the identity by makeup, you know. And not even when she did concerts. I did makeup on concerts, but only there. And <laughs> never, never else in my life. So that's uh, the update. And then the other update that uh, Christine is at home again and that she's better and good. And that's where we are at the moment. Hmm. My, other update, <laughs> my other update is I'm, uh, I'm leaving New York. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Which is a different topic. <laughs> Where to? Where are you going to? I'm I'm gonna go back to California for a bit, and then I might go up to um, Portland uh -huh, for far, a bit. Huh? Um, I uh, the the short answer is I I can't afford to live here right now. Oh, um, I it just wasn't coming together, and I had to make the hard choice to take a break. Um, I'm subletting my apartment. I'm packing all my things up into the side room, so I have the opportunity to come back if. Mm -hmm if you know I can get a job you know, I'm going to apply for jobs while I'm over there but but really my plan my real plan is to have some time to sit and reflect and figure out what I want to do like what what is my dream and what is the thing that I want to be pursuing and I think I've just been in survival mode for so long mm -hmm. of just taking whatever I can find and just trying to pay the bills and run around you know and a lot of wonderful things have come out of that but I feel a little untethered and ungrounded and I want to really put myself on a track, you know, so. It seems really wise, doesn't it? To have I hope so. <laughs> well, I mean, if you have a clarity about your purpose. Or the and that's what I'm hoping to get. That you, I don't think you can run after it, but you can begin to receive it. Yeah. So it is about receiving, I think. And yeah. if you're in a new setting where you're not doing jobs that distract you, yeah. then you can open your mind and spirit to receive where, because you've got so many darn, you've got so many gifts, you're going to get to prioritize things. Yeah, that's the hope. So that's, that's my big, it's the end, at the end of the month, I'm leaving. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, the apartment is all boxes and <laughs> disaster. But, you know, that took some courage to make that decision. So kudos. Thank you. Yeah. So you uh, gave up all the jobs you had, or you just canceled them, or you? The nonprofit jobs fell, uh, all blew up in mm -hmm. uh, April, April and March, mm -hmm. um, March and April, and no, actually February and March is that far back. And then the the church job that I have here that I'm supporting the education program. I mean that I'm not going to officially resign. I'm actually going to say that I would like to give them a decision in a few months if I'd like to come back. Um, but it was only part-time. They didn't have a full-time position for me, so it wasn't enough. The babysitting, you know, is also part-time and they're going away for the summer and that's anyway, not enough money to, <laughs> I mean, I love, I love the little kid, but, um, but they're going away for the summer. So if I come back, I also, you know, can go back to them. Um, and then I have one 
online job that's very, very part-time. It's only 20 hours a month. So very minimal, which I will continue when I go, but, um, but it didn't, it, it wasn't adding up to be enough to. <laughs> so you are actually going back to your mother or? I'm going back to my mother for a bit. And then um, I uh, I'm, I'm dating someone who lives in Portland. Uh -huh. uh, he has a house and uh I'm going to, I've never been to Portland and a lot of people have told me that it's, it's great up there. So I'm going to go and see what it's like to, to live up there for a bit. Um, and then I might, I might visit my friends in L. I mean, I might just, I might kind of run around the West coast visiting people. Um, not too much. because I do want to, I do need to sit and think. <laughs> it's nice to, to see you as the young part of our community, let's say, and to be so in the, you know, starting position for life i like this and your your spirit of you know wonderful what can the wisdom of the elders uh, tell her at this point <laughs> i think i already, already gave her my little bit right <laughs> trust yourself listen and don't be so darn busy <laughs> i know <laughs> well i guess it's what you do now, you may not be able to do in about uh, 10, 20 or 30 years. So really enjoy every moment. Yeah. Even if you don't know where you're going or where you're sitting or where you're stepping, it's just uh, if you have the energy and the power, the strength, just be in the moment. That's my, where I am now because we had Yesterday, my cousin was visiting and he's 79. And of course, it's old age, it's just, <clears throat> it gets less and less and less, everything is reduced and the event horizon sort of gets more narrow and it's, yeah. So uh, our, our class, where we where I went to school, we were really into opera, theater, music. And now I just don't feel like, uh, I've seen most of the operas so many times and the theaters are rather strange right now in Austria because they always try to educate you. And after a certain age, you don't like to be educated in the theater, <laughs> you just won't, uh, yeah, either, yeah, anyway. So. <clears throat> Can I ask you a question? Mona, are you talking about how much energy you have? Mm. Or the, the things that you're interested in have shifted? Mm. So a combination of those things? Yeah. yeah. And of course, my husband is uh, moves around less and less. So we canceled our vacation because he doesn't feel like driving such a long time and being there and being the oldest one there in this hotel. So, um, so we're really reducing everything. And, but it's, we have a very nice uh, terrace and sitting there is quite, it's peaceful, just the birds twittering and everything, anything else would be a lot more of stress. So uh, I'm very relaxed, let's put it this way, but being relaxed and just, don't feeling like doing anything. So that's new to me. Mm. And uh, actually uh, I was just uh, digging into patriarchy and uh, the role of women. And uh, I don't know how, I, yeah, I was just checking my books on the shelf just to, which I don't need anymore. And it's amazing uh, how long it takes until something changes. That's really amazing. Uh, for example, the church, the influence of the church in Austria is still so, and if it, even if it's just the holidays they have, it may, every other week there is a, a couple of holidays and people don't want to give them up. So it's not because it's a religious holiday, but because it's a holiday. And so now uh, my husband said, well, it's uh, 
no longer the church that keeps up the holidays. It's uh, the, the Socialist Party and uh, and that's, that's really funny because uh, once you have a holiday, you don't want to give it up, but even if it's just a, a rather absurd topic like, uh, well, not, not Lent, Lent is just nice. I've, I'm very much in favor of the Holy Spirit being female, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, anything else, it's just the ascension of Mary to heaven and, and oh, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's, it's really uh, for us or for me personally, uh, I noticed that I'm just withdrawing uh, and I don't know where I will end. So finally, I'm just at one, at one minute point where I will end. But I don't feel like attending the peer group or the salon in the unit salon, online Zoom. It's just, I don't know, it, it, it no longer touches my heart. So that's uh, something new too. And it sounds a little bit like depressive energy and it needs some of the spirit of Beatrice. To <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let Beatrice have her energy and let me have my just, uh, I don't know, sitting in the recliner and relaxing and reading a book or, uh, yeah. That's what I was wondering about, about reading, because that has been one of my senses about you, is that you get some deep heart pleasure mm. in, with what you choose to read. Mm. And that it can be fresh and has nothing to do with the habits mm. of the church mm. or the habits of your husband or the habits of others. Yeah, well, that is sort of, a, sort of an escape, actually. Well, but I've been just it? reading something very interesting before uh um what is the title mindsight uh -huh. Uh -huh. it's about empathy and uh that by interacting you sort of uh become more of a person so yeah. why, why do you why do you call that what, it, what was the word you just used you called it a like a distraction of some kind gape what so the okay. word was escape. 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 Why would you label it like that, Monia? When you're giving yourself a rich experience, why do you call it escape? Well, it's escape from my actual everyday life, which is doing the laundry, hanging it up, taking it down. <laughs> so it. Uh, okay, so that's what you mean. It's you're not so thrilling, yeah. The boring things you, you're not doing. You're escaping the boring stuff yeah. to do something yeah. that's enriching yeah. your spirit. Yeah. Okay, I got that. Thank you. That's fair enough, no? That, that you yeah. have some counter action to the things uh, you have to do all the time. Uh, yeah. Christine, is you are uh, at home now? I heard, and you are feeling better. Um, I just have different stuff going on in states. I don't, the things that put me in the hospital was some kind of very strange allergic reaction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that reduced my ability to breathe and a bunch of stuff that they were confused by and they just needed to observe me and watch me. So that's history. And I've been back home for about uh, a week. Mm -hmm. Now I have a raging, wonderful other surprise. And I'm not gonna go into any more detail, but. I've got a, a flaming UTI, ur urinary tract infection. Oh. Which means the bladder is not very happy. Yeah. Mm. So that's happening at the moment. So it just seems, I seem to be checking things off. Okay, I've done that. <laughs> Let's have another week of good, because it's beautiful weather here right now. <gasps> oh my God, this spring and summer, it's just been really, I mean, lots of rain and lots of sun. So every are just, oh, they're just. Send me some rain, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you too dry there? Are you? I work late dry. The last time it really rained was December. No way. Yeah, there were two or three times that it rained a little bit more since then. But oh gosh, what are you doing? Water, are you? I have uh, bought, uh, now I have a provision of 30,000 liters. 
and still the 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 well is still going a little bit like pp but oh, if it is drying oh, out then we have to really that's awful that's a bill that's a huge yeah, that's, normally in uh, in april it's raining and it didn't rain at all and in may it didn't rain and uh, and now it doesn't rain in in june normally there are the the big um thunderstorms what yeah. is happening now which is only the last few years which wasn't before that we have gray days really gray it's covered but it's not raining mm. and it's hot and for me i mean i'm a conspiracy theorist as you know for me they are manipulating a little bit here the weathers well i guess it's the orbs as well because we have lots of rain we have so much rain you can't uh, it's it's too much rain yeah about 14, exactly what it is because... liters, uh, but not where, the amazing thing is where <clears throat> we are in vienna it's just a little mild drizzle but on other parts or the outskirts it's terrible so yeah. Now, what I heard is that there are many nanoparticles being freed up by several processes and that they enable the clouds to keep the rain longer so they don't lose it. And when they lose it, then it's a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and that would explain the, the, the floods and the missing rain here, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's especially my area is missing rain. More in the north it rained, more in the south it rained. Conspiracy against you in person. Yes, <laughs> exactly. They are against me and they don't want me to have my vegetable garden flourish. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm very preoccupied. Now I figured out I was at the integral conference no? and there was the um, uh, one, uh, there were many wonderful things, but one which I was very, intrigued by was the attachment styles um, no and the different at attachment styles and then I, I did a assessment and now I, I understand <clears throat> my, my whole life because my attachment style is anxious preoccupied and that's exactly what what I am preoccupied that we don't have water preoccupied that this and this and this and this and I realize okay, there is um, a person who is already dead, Dan Brown. He made uh, uh, exercises, uh, meditations, how um, with a motto, uh, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. So there are uh, exercises that you replace your parents with very good parents. Mm -hmm. And this, our friend Hannah, she said that uh, it helped a lot. And the, on the conference was David Elliott, and he uh, <clears throat> introduced this. He is the co-author with Stan Brown, who is already dead. And um, that made me so much hope that I, I might get out of the constant preoccupation thing, you know, because actually I remember my mother had a lot of problems and so, and I remember myself sitting in front of the door of the bedroom of her and she was in there and I was desperate because she said she doesn't need anything anymore she would die soon so and this you imagine a five-year-old child uh, or six-year-old child so it, it comes to me clearly that, that this ancient this ancient style which I have is being preoccupied about the caregivers and the caregivers are not preoccupied of you let's say no they don't care for you and that is becoming so like an opening to me, you know, and that I can do something about it. So I'm really yeah. that's wonderful. <laughs> excited. That's really, you can have new new family members. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so far only in imagination, but I hope that then other people will uh, arrive, you know, which uh, you you get probably another emanation when you when you get rid of these uh, co deep conditionings, you know. So your face just lights up as you talk about these new yeah. new caretakers. <laughs> oh, that's so nice! And I was so surprised in the session they gave their workshop at the <laughs> conference how quickly I could enter into this meditation and the visualization. Normally I can't, but it was so quick and. Then 
the, the, the little child, I was two years or something, and the parents, I was in a little bathtub, you know, in the garden, and they played with me and with the water. And it has never happened in real life. But with this, it was so good. I really enjoyed it. It was, so, it was great. So I'm very much motivated to go out of these moody uh, things, you know. Do you have a title for a book or...? Uh... Yeah, the uh, the book is I've forgotten. Attachment styles, I guess. Dan Dan mm -hmm. Brown and David mm -hmm. Elliot. I looked it okay. up. It's only it costs a lot, so I I didn't buy it and I tried to to do it so and with a key keynote he had at the conference and also the workshop. So, but really, really. Exciting. I mean, I knew about attachment problems. Um, uh, Bowlby was the originator in the 60s, and I already read the book in the 70s, but he was more concerned with animals, and he had only three different styles, secure attachment, uh, ambivalent attachment, and insecure attachment, while these uh, now have uh, five or six different styles, and it's more uh, differentiated, and so clearer because knowing about it is one thing but getting the practice to to change something is a different thing so but you seem to have caught it like that yeah i mean your but, body says so your spirit was ready yeah exactly yeah you know the way i can the little box i put it in is that you're such a healthy four now you don't have to rubble mm -hmm. around in anything that's less than closer to the light and it has something to do with your essence yeah yeah and i knew i knew for a long time that in my essence in the very deep down is um uh, how do you say playful is uh is gay is is allegro no but it was always the four style is always put, putting you and the four comes from my mother i mean we are talking about any type four she was for sure one of those, you know, and then it's it's like in your life, and I say it also to Beatrice, you are sort of collecting little pieces, 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 and then you try to put them together to a picture and, you know, like a collage. And sometimes you have to put out some piece and put another one in. And so, and the older you get, at least that's my impression, the more complete the picture becomes, the more clear, let's say, maybe not complete, but clear. Clear, yeah. yeah. That's, you just sound so clear mm -hmm. as you talk about the play. Yeah, also because you're looking for your purpose, you know, I think it's all work in progress. Yes, you find it, but then you find another thing and think, oh, yeah, that, that fits, that I take also this, and then I exchange something and, and so on, that's... yeah. I mean, what I love about what you're saying is that it doesn't matter how old you are necessarily or how much you feel like you might be losing some energy, it can still be a fresh purpose that might be right there. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Monia now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, the positive aspect of the last weeks was that I remembered Ken Wilbur of all people and his transcend and include. And sometimes you have to transcend people, but include what they gave to you and appreciate it. And I guess uh, appreciating a mother, uh, well, I was very lucky. I had a lucky childhood, although we, I grew up in the war, during the war, the last, years of the war was all the bombing but I had a very protected and loving childhood uh, and I do wonder if we where we take the courage to transcend people in your present life right now what do you mean with transcend people uh, well it, being no longer attached to them as you said attachment Mm -hmm. um, but being grateful for what they gave you and uh, appreciating what they are, 
but no longer being attached to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and this is uh, this saying transcend and include, and it really is a very substantial and positive approach mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful to Wilbur that he formulated it like this. Yeah, I, I really resonate with that as well. Mm -hmm. I put, might use words a tiny bit different, but that same feeling that I'm letting go. Mm -hmm. Some people that were very important in my immediate life. And now I can let go because they no longer, I no longer feel that I am my best self when they are around. Mm -hmm. would be the way I might frame it. Therefore, I'm choosing to be with people that where I really feel like my core self comes alive with them. That's yeah. where I want to be. Right. Yeah. I'm not blaming the others aren't wrong. They're just not here now. Is that more or less the same yeah. zone of sorts? Sorry, Beatrice, this comes from us oldies. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have a choice. And yeah, let's uh, ask the different question. What can a young person say to the oldies? <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Give it to us. It's a little unfair. It's one to three. No, no. Go <laughs> for it. You see life with a different eye than we do. So, uh, you know, that is interesting what you could... <laughs> I imagine that all these sometimes are a nuisance to younger people. So uh, you you could figure out what what you might think older people, if us maybe we don't know, but other old <laughs> people, <laughs> what they could be or do different. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> the trap uh, is getting more and more complicated. <laughs> Uh, Beatrice, you, we're, mentioned we're going to be you mentioned in passing that you are dating somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you mean we should date somebody, uh, <laughs> make life new. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I wouldn't be against it at this time of my life. <laughs> okay, we're going to be quiet now and you're going to ask us questions that will enliven us. The moment. Okay. What Wait, you on the spot. No, I think the thing that when when young people are annoyed by old people, which I I, I don't like that statement, but but if, if I take it, I think it's often, and I I don't feel this in this group, but it's often, but I think this is true at any age when you encounter people that are not willing to be open minded or not willing to see a different perspective. I think that's where frustration comes between generations um, when people are set in their ways in a very particular way and are not. We know it, you know. <laughs> oh, oh. And, and sometimes you do, I mean, some, but that's, you know, some of it is, is, yeah, you know, life experience and there's wisdom there. I mean, I think it goes both directions. I think, I think, Younger generations don't respect the wisdom of older generations, but I think also sometimes older generations hold that life experience over the younger generation saying, well, this is just the way it is and don't acknowledge that, you know, maybe the world is changing and the way that what it feels like to be 30 in 2022 is very different than what it felt like to be 30, you know, decades before. Um, and that the, the, the whole world is actually shifting. It's not just, you know, an age thing. It's also the whole world. So I think that's, I don't know, that, that would be my comment to that. <laughs> Christine, I muted you. There came a, a noise also before it was a noise. So okay. oh, there was. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Like laughing too much. I'm sorry. No, no. It was when you <laughs> when you when you changed your position, then the microphone, oh. and then there was some uh, in the background. Sorry. Is it okay now? Yeah. Okay. So the underbelly of what I'm the way I'm taking in what you've offered us, Beatrice, and thank you. It's really, regardless of age or subculture, it's it's really this deep curiosity to have about from moment to moment. Mm -hmm. but what's where where what's this experience now 
and how am I bringing it into my to my deepest place being present and, with curiosity and generosity of spirit and empathy to hear someone else's perspective okay. and I think that's I think a lot of problems in the world between whatever group and whatever group age gender country whatever right. is if both parties are willing to to really hear what's going on on the other side and then find a, find a way to to you know what it, what is the mutual understanding or what is the next action or whatever but i think in any in any situation when people when people get too dogmatic and too stuck in their ways then you start hitting walls with other people that don't don't fit your mold and 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 everybody you know there's a lot of different categories of identities and people that you know should be heard i don't know well i think that's the opposite of curiosity is making judgments about somebody else's values and perspective yeah so rather than look at the negative which is the judgment if we stay curious it's catching mm -hmm. Other people pick it up and can begin to let go of stuff that's in the way of intimacy, I think. I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes complete sense. What I wanted to ask you, do you think that we are a different generation of elders uh, that we can be curious? Because I remember when my grandparents were 60 or something, they were quite fixed in their ideas and so on. So is it... Um, also to Monia, the question, is this the generation of the post 68s who we seem to be younger or seem to be half this curiosity, which is normally connected with younger age? Uh, you can't generalize. Uh, we have lots of uh, acquaintances who are not very interested in anything anymore and they read their mails about every three weeks and uh, so it depends uh, it depends on the person and on the personality but I was just while I was listening to you I was wondering if we could choose a topic where do you get your thrill Mm. at your age because my grandchildren uh, they go to the Prato you know the amusement park mm. and there is the black mamba do you know that it's mm. something you are you are just chained into something and then it just throws you at 60 kilometers per hour through the air and that's so much fun and I, you, if you gave me five thousand dollars I wouldn't sit on that so, <laughs> Uh, I would just, yeah, I, I'd probably get sick or scared. I don't know. But <laughs> they get, uh, and even the youngest grandchild, the 18-year-old, said, yeah, I have to do that again. It's so much fun. And I was just, uh, uh, you can look <laughs> up the video in uh, on YouTube. It's just, uh, even, as I said, if you paid me to sit on it, I wouldn't sit on it. So That's why, silly. why, where, so I was wondering, where do I get still a thrill do i still need a thrill and so on and so on so this is what i suggest as a topic that, i would love that i think that's great yeah. I, but i want to look at the youtube how do you spell that mamba black mamba m-a-m-b-a -M -A. mamba a-m-b-a okay black i mean i feel that way when i'm hanging out with the four-year-old <laughs> you see you know, tumbling all over the place and climbing things and crashing into things and you know and and just thrilled by all of it and I think like, I don't want to do any of that <laughs> to be thrown on the couch or you know it's it's uh, but I think it's a great question you know yeah. what is thrilling now what is thrilling to me now or to you and to, to be interested in so okay I'll write it down <laughs> Yeah. Let us find for the end a short answer. What you think would, would be a thrill today? I mean, Beatrice and you, you have more time for the day, so you can choose something which takes longer. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'll do anything today that'll thrill me, but um, I think my answer of what thrills me 
these days is going going dancing mm -hmm. yeah when and when it's really good when the music is really good and the other dancers are really good and it's a really fun you know it, it's yeah that's my answer well to me it would be if there was all of a sudden peace tomorrow in europe mm. that would really thrill me mm. so this is strange because I don't feel war as long as you are not hanging on the news outlets, you don't uh, get it. And so um, that's why it's not immediate mm -hmm. impression mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. me, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So for me, I, what I was thinking about when I listen to very good music, classical music, and there are these subtleties in there, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes mm -hmm. I have a very good, listen to very good music or Berliner Philharmonics or, or in Medici t TV, uh, there's very good music, very good musicians. And then there come these moments, often very low um, volume moments and with a lot of, mm -hmm. let's say, pauses. I don't know how, uh, where the tension is keeping on, but and you are like listening like this, you know? And then it's touching your heart. Mm. And this is for me very that's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And when it, it it's for the night, for the day it would be go out with the plants, do something in my garden, and this is still watching the plants grow, you know, every day. And that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I found I've, I have to mention that I found a wasp's nest about five centimeters in uh, on our balcony where we have where we keep all these pillows all the year round and we didn't see it before and then all of a sudden we noticed it that was a thrill and my husband is a toxic allergic against wasp and there this, was this wasp nest and it was in the in the chest and so I looked at it, but there was no no wasps. There were no wasps around, and so I figured maybe it's empty. But in, in Austria, the the you have to call uh, the fire brigade to remove oh, wasps. No. Nests. And I said, well, that he, we can't ask them here. Maybe that's empty, and it's just this size. So so we ask an expert because we have a, a relative who is an expert. And he's, he said, yeah, if there is no movement around, you can just take it. And, and it, it, it was very easily to remove. And, and of course, it was empty. Mm. That's the kind of thrill I really don't want. Lucky, <laughs> lucky you, because I had this thrill not noticing that there were two uh, big nests. And then, oh. and, uh, but I don't, I don't care. I take the, the, the and I the what the what the, the, how how do you call this the spray the pesticide. The pesticide. The spray. yeah yeah that's the only time when I use pesticides I never use them but the wasps, wasps. if I hadn't taken antihistamines I would have had a, an arm like this yeah. Yeah. so that's the only well my husband had a toxic shock uh, it was bitten here uh, stung here in the in the in the little finger. Oh, yeah. And it was just, oh, we never forget that. So he now has this pen and he takes it around all the time, but he hates wasps. And yeah, me too. of course, <laughs> on our balcony, there is a wasp. It was just, uh, yeah. You need to have my, my dog Lucky. She is catching wasps and eating them afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, maybe that's thrilling to the dog, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what is thrilling to you, Christine? What is thrilling to me? Well, actually, I, I didn't expect this, so it's fabulous. Um, you know, I've studied with Russ Hudson. Um, one, the, he's sort of the number one Enneagram expert on the planet. Um, he's, a, he's a type five and he's in his 60s someplace. And I studied there four years and I feel like I got his best, but then all of a sudden he's come out with something new a completely new model to use within the Enneagram to heal relationships. Oh, it is so beautiful. And it isn't just within the type, it's dealing with some of the triads 
the complex mathematics, shall we say, of the Enneagram, drawing on certain components of those mathematics. And I had two hours of training with him and now I'm integrating it and figuring out ways to bring it to others. It is amazing. It's like simple, just like simple getting rid of the wasp net with picking it up and throwing it. Once I understand it, I'll be able to, within maybe five or 10 minutes, one day soon when we're together, I'll be able to say, this is how it works. It's beautiful. I love to take something that's complex and touching spirit and making it simple and accessible. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. It's fabulous. It's yeah. so much fun. Yeah. And I spent, I was down at the creek yesterday with I'm training a student and that to, to learn the stuff I've learned. And you know, the best way to learn something is to teach it. Mm -hmm. So we spent four hours at the creek with the water dripping along under the trees on the platform and passing on this information that I'm barely understanding myself. But as the two of us talked, it just got more and more concrete. So I'm thrilled by that. And we thrilled each other tonight again. I That's see nice. even Monia is a little less. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's catching. <laughs> Okay, ladies, thank you. And see you next time. See you next time.